Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a button placket, also known as a partial placket, to your tops or bodices. The placket opens up the neckline, making a fitted neckline easier to get on, but it can also be added as a design detail. I'll be doing my example in cotton, but you can also do this with knits. First, I'll show you how to create an easy pattern for your placket, and then we'll move on to assembly. Let's go ahead and get started. First, what you need to do is determine your finished length and width of the placket. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm just laying out my buttons how I would like it. And I'm just doing an example here. But you need to make sure that you take into account that there's going to be a seam allowance here still. It doesn't matter if you're doing a facing, a collar, or whatever. The neckline still needs to be finished. So I'm going to be losing 5 eighths of an inch on top here. So just take that into account and just shift your buttons accordingly. But I'm going to say, OK. So at this point, this is how I would like my buttons. We're going to pretend there was a placket here. And I'm going to measure down to where I want it to end. So I'm just going to say, OK, I want it to be 6 inches from top to the bottom of my placket. And then the finished width, and that's really determined by how big your buttons are. I usually like to have a quarter inch on each side of the button. So we make sure it's not too small of a placket. But you also don't want it to be too big. So if I measure this and then I add a half inch, because it's a quarter and a quarter, so that makes a half, we'll just keep it easy and I'll say, OK, my finished width of my placket is going to be 1 inch. We can use our measurements for the finished length and width in order to create a very basic pattern for us. So you're basically creating a rectangle. So for the length, this side, it's going to be your finished length plus about 2 inches. I'm just picking 2 inches. You can do more, you can do a little bit less. But 2 inches is a good number. So again, I want my finished length to be 6 inches. I'm going to add 2 inches to that. That's going to be 8 inches. For the width of our pattern, it's going to be 5 times whatever our desired finished width is, plus a half inch. This half inch is for a seam allowance. So I wanted the finished width to be 1 inch. So I'm going 5 times 1 plus a half inch is 5 and a half. So my rectangle is 8 inches by 5 and a half. I drew my rectangle on some pattern paper, 5 and a half by 8 inches. And I'm going to take the width size. So usually I think for most of us it's going to be the shorter side. You're going to take this length, you're going to divide it in half, and then draw a line right down the center. Here's that centered line. Then I'm going to be drawing on my stitch line. So that's this green line here. The way to figure that out is you're going to take your finished width. For example, mine is one inch that I want my finished width to be. And I'm going to imagine it's placed right on the center of the center line here. So if I was to measure over here, it's a half inch. Here, it's a half inch. And if you go from green line to green line, that's one inch. So I'm just taking that width, dividing it in half, and that's what I do on each side. It goes down to whatever you want your finished length to be. So for me, that's 6 inches. So from here to here is 6 inches, and that's where my stitching line ends. So this is now my basic pattern for my placket, and I'm going to cut one out of my fabric and one out of my interfacing. Apply the interfacing to the wrong side of your fabric piece. I'm going to be using fusible interfacing. So I'm going to look at the wrong side of my fabric. And then with the fusible interfacing, you have the glue side, so it has a little bit of a texture. That goes towards the wrong side. I already have my iron heating up. I'll put my press cloth over it to protect it. And then just dampen it. Grab my iron, and I'm going to carefully set it down in one section for a few seconds. Then carefully lift up my iron and move it over to the next section until the fusible interfacing is attached to the wrong side. Take your front bodice piece, place it so it's wrong side facing up, and I'm going to draw with my fabric marker a line down the center of the bodice. So this is cutting my neckline in half and where the placket's going to go. And if you look at my placket piece now with the interfacing, on the wrong side I have my center line and then I have my stitch lines transferred from my pattern. I'm going to center this center line with this line right here. 
So it's easier if you make this line a little bit longer than your fabric piece, so it makes it a little bit easier to match up. And you're going to pin it into place because then we're going to take it to our sewing machine and we're going to stitch right on our stitch line, not on the center line, just on this dash line that I have. I'm going to follow my lines with a regular straight stitch. When I get to the corner, I'm just going to put my needle down, lift my foot, and then rotate the fabric. And then I can continue on. So again, I'm following those stitch lines. Don't forget to do a back stitch on the beginning and end of your stitch. Use your fabric scissors to cut on the center line. So I flip this around, so now this is the neckline right here. So down the center line, you're going to stop about a half inch from the end and then cut to each corner, being careful not to cut any of your stitches along this edge. Here's the cut down the middle, and you can see I made it a little Y at the end with my scissors. So there's just a little triangle down here. I'm then going to go in with my scissors, and now that this is cut apart, it makes it a little bit easier. You're going to trim most of this away, so you're leaving just a quarter inch of fabric past your stitches. So I'm doing it on this side, this side, and also at the bottom. Your pocket should look like something like this. On each of my length edges now, I'm going to fold over a quarter of an inch and I'm going to press it. So I'm doing it on this side and then on this side as well. Flip your bodice over so you're looking at the right side and we're gonna start with the left part of this opening here. I'm gonna take this placket, I'm gonna pull it out and you'll see you have this seam allowance right here. So you wanna press this so it's going towards the placket. And you just wanna take this other part and just kinda of fold it out of the way. Now this is the part that we just created where we folded over a quarter of an inch and pressed it. And you're gonna take this folded edge here, bring it over so that the edge lines up with your stitch line. So you can't see my stitches, but if you can see your stitches, that's where you're matching up the fold line and then you're going to pin it into place. And I would say press it again so you end up with a nice crisp edge over here. And you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and stitch right along the edge, but you're gonna stop when you get to the end. So this is where it would go down and then pivot across. So for me, that's my six inches down. So I would stop right here when I'm sewing this into place. I'm stitching this about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. And again, it's just a regular straight stitch and don't forget to back stitch. This side is stitched down. So now we're gonna work on the other side. So I basically took my placket and brought it all over to the right side. So it looks something like this. This next step is a little tricky. You wanna make sure that this seam allowance is pressed again towards this right placket because we are gonna be folding it over. And just for now, I'm just gonna fold it over just to show you what I do. So we have this part folded underneath this and we want to make sure that this is going to overlap this placket so all i'm going to do is just after i fold it just kind of bring it over and down here it kind of forms like an accordion so let me show you that again so this is stitched into place i had brought it all forward and you can see this is flat underneath there so i fold this over like this I fold this over my seam allowance on this side, and then I overlap it with this placket over here, because you want it to lie nice and flat like this. So I would go ahead and do this. You can go ahead and start pinning this into place just up here at the top, and then press it just so it looks as nice as possible. Stitch along this folded edge and make sure that you pull this apart so we're not actually stitching through this. You're just stitching down till you get to the bottom of the opening. So for me, that would be my six inches down and you don't need to stitch any further down right now. Here's the bottom of my placket currently. So where I stopped stitching at my six inch mark, I have all this extra part right here. I'm gonna measure down about an inch and a quarter and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. So all this is gonna get trimmed off. I'm then gonna go from these bottom layers here and I'm gonna trim them just a little bit shorter because we're eventually gonna take what's left and we're gonna fold it under a quarter of an inch and that's gonna cut down some of the bulk so we don't have to stitch through all this fabric. I trim the bottom and if I was to lift this, you can see how much I trimmed on this bottom layer here. So I'm making sure everything's lined up here so it's all even. Then I'm gonna turn this under, 
a quarter of an inch and pin it into place. To finish off, at the bottom you're going to stitch a design that looks like this. It's essentially a box and then you're just going to do an X in the center of it. If your machine has a little bit of trouble going through the, all, all the layers because you're going through this layer and then you're also going through the bodice, so my yellow fabric as well. So this gets stitched down to this. You may want to use a walking foot and a heavy duty needle. At this point our placket is complete. So I have my X in a box down here. We have the top placket, the bottom placket. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wrong side. Looks pretty nice even on the wrong side there. Now this is done more towards the front of the assembly of your bodice or shirt. If you're going to do something like buttonholes to it, you're going to want to do that towards the end of the assembly. So at this point you would continue on creating the rest of your top or bodice. For buttonholes, I recommend putting them on the top placket and buttons go on the bottom placket. If you need help in doing machine buttonholes, I recommend you check out our tutorial, Sewing Machine Buttonholes for Assistance. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.